Trade wars have dominated global financial markets in May and bond markets are clearly warning of weaker global growth ahead as tariff hikes start to bite. Global markets have had a lot to worry about over recent weeks. We've had Trump announce that tariffs on 200 billion of goods imports from China would increase from 10 to 25 percent and the work on the next round of tariffs on the final 300 billion of imports have started too. We've had Huawei put on a blacklist and the Commerce Department announced they were looking at a rule change that could place countervailing duties on imports from countries that act to undervalue their currency. We've also seen a step up in retaliation from China too. Chinese tariffs on 60 billion of imports from the US increased tomorrow and the People's Daily suggested this week that China is seriously considering restricting rare earth exports to the US. Rare earth elements such as lanthanum and neodymium are used in, in a host of complex electronic goods such as smartphones, night vision goggles, guidance systems, and China has become the dominant supplier of these rare elements to the rest of the world. As we move into June with a G20 meeting at the end of the month, which is supposed to see Trump and Xi sit down to talk trade, these increased signs of aggression from both leaders has left equity markets unsettled. The S&P 500 is set to finish the month down around 5% and China's Shanghai index close to 7%. Concerns about global growth have driven US 10-year yields down to the lowest seen since September 2017 and copper is back on the lows for the year. If Fed Vice Chair Clarida is a fair reflection of the views within the FOMC, then it appears the board is watching trade developments closely. In Q&A, after a speech to market participants in New York Thursday, he commented that if incoming data were to ind indicate that global economic and financial developments present a material downside risk, then these are developments that the committee would take into account in assessing the appropriate stance for monetary policy. While there are a number of ifs in that comment, it's one of the clear statements yet that the Fed is watching trade wars closely and markets brought pricing of a rate cut in the US forward to September. Despite this, a widely watched measure of the US dollar is at two-year highs and that's despite Trump facing more political pressure at home after special counsel Mueller's statement earlier in the week. Trump will also likely face criticism for the emergency measures announced to address the Mexican border crisis which will see a 5% tariff on all goods imported from Mexico starting June 10 rising to 10% July 1 and so on till 25% October 1 unless Mexico substantially stops the illegal inflow of aliens into the US. Back in Australia, the RBA outlook remains the key talking point. Westpac was the first major bank to forecast a cash rate below 1%. On 24 May, Chief Economist Bill Evans wrote, Westpac is now forecasting three cuts in 2019 in June, August and November to push the cash rate from 1.5 to 75 basis points and to hold that level until 2020. We're therefore confidently forecasting a rate cut next week. Now an important area of support for the Aussie dollar has continued this week with iron ore touching the highest levels back to April 2014 and in Aussie dollar terms it hit the highest since August 2013. It was probably this factor alone that helped the Australian dollar range above 69 cents in quiet trade versus the US dollar through the week. Clearly the RBA will dominate a very busy week for financial markets. All forecasters expect a 25 basis point rate cut on Tuesday, so the guidance from the RBA on the prospects for more cuts will be key for price action in domestic money markets. We also have retail sales in the current account deficit Tuesday, Q1 GDP on Wednesday and the April trade balance on Thursday. Westpac's forecasting a 0.6 real GDP growth in the first quarter but with downside risks adding to the possibility that the Australian dollar drops below 69 cents next week. These are all factors we'll talk about in next week's markets update.